greetings in the previous chapter we have studied the reduction formula and how to apply this to the problems particularly of the type integration 0 to pi by 2 sin raised to mx or integration 0 to pi by 2 cos raised to nx or integration 0 to pi by 2 sin raised to mx into cos raised to nx uh, in this lecture we're going to learn the next topic of unit number three that is gamma function basically as earlier we have discussed gamma functions are used to simplify the integrations that those problems are can or cannot be solved directly we can solve them using the help of gamma functions so basically gamma function is used to find the definite integrations so first of all we will look for the definition of gamma function gamma function is defined for a positive value of n so the definition is like gamma function of n greater than 0 is given by gamma n equal to integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus x x raised to n minus 1 dx if you look at the right hand side of this definition it's clearly uh, we can say that this integration is totally depend on exponential to the minus x and x to the power n minus 1 and the limits are from 0 to infinity so suppose if we consider integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus x x raised to 3 dx so in this term x raised to 3 can be written as x raised to 2 minus 1 hence this is nothing but gamma 2 now we'll see the properties of gamma functions the first property is gamma n equal to 2 times integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus x square x to the power 2n minus 1 dx. Uh, the proofs of these properties will not be there for examination, but uh, for simplicity, we can easily prove this. Instead, suppose we put x square equal to t, therefore we get 2x dx is equal to dt, that is x dx can be written as dt by 2. Hence, the integration changes to 2 times integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus t as x we are replacing x to the 2n minus 2 into x. So, x is replaced by x square is replaced by t. Therefore, the integration is e, integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus t x to the power oh, sorry t to the power n minus 1 into dt upon 2 so that 2 get cancelled and we get integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus t t to the power n minus 1 dt and that is nothing but gamma n second property is gamma 1 equal to 1 now if you easily put the value n equal to 1 in the rhs of definition of gamma n you will easily get that integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus x x to the power 0 dx and the integration is e raised to minus x upon minus 1 from 0 to infinity and if you put upper limit it is 0 minus lower limit is minus 1 so minus minus 1 we get the plus 1 so gamma 1 equal to 1 now gamma 0 equal to infinity we'll look the proof of this in the next property third property is gamma n plus 1 equal to n gamma n now this property can easily look at like say if you by uh, the definition of gamma function if we put n equal to n plus 1 we get integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus x x to the power n dx and by applying by parts this integration can reduce to n gamma n hence gamma n plus 1 is equal to n gamma n so in other words if you think gamma n can be written as gamma n plus 1 upon n so if we put n equal to 0 then we easily 
get that get gamma 0 equal to gamma 1 upon 0 and that is nothing but infinity therefore gamma 0 equal to infinity now the next property is gamma n plus 1 equal to n factorial if n is integer now suppose if you find the value of gamma 2 by the third property gamma n plus 1 can be written as n gamma n hence gamma 2 can be written as 1 gamma 1 and that is 1 similarly gamma 3 can be written as 2 gamma 2 that is 2 into 1 gamma 4 can be written as 3 gamma 3 that is 3 into 2 into 1 hence in generalize gamma n plus 1 can be written as n n minus 1 n minus 2 up to 1 that is gamma n plus 1 equal to n factorial similarly gamma half equal to root pi now again uh, we will not go to the proof of this because for this proof we required some knowledge of beta functions hence we will prove this property number 5 after the knowledge of beta functions so uh, quickly a uh, revision of properties if you look at the most important property we need is gamma n plus 1 equal to n gamma n and if the integer is given then gamma n plus 1 equal to n factorial now if i consider gamma 3 by 2 this 3 by 2 can be written as half plus 1 hence gamma 3 by 2 can be written as half gamma half similarly gamma 5 by 2 can be written as 3 by 2 1 by 2 gamma half gamma 7 by 2 can be written as 5 by 2 3 by 2 1 by 2 gamma half. so in the same way you can find out what is gamma 11 by 2 what is gamma 13 by 2 and so on now uh, in this slide we have studied the properties and definition of gamma function now we require some transformations of gamma function we will look at in the next slide the first transformation we look at integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus k y y raised to n minus 1 dy equal to gamma n upon k raised to n now if you compare this with the definition of gamma function it is easily traceable that integration is from 0 to infinity e to the minus power is given y to the uh, n minus 1 is given so this is the example of gamma function but the problem is instead of minus ky we want only a variable so if you put ky equal to t then we get k dy equal to dt that is dy equal to dt upon k so if you replace this value in the integrations the limits are not changing hence integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus t y can be replaced by t upon k to the power n minus 1 into dt upon k hence summing all this we get 1 upon k raised to n integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus k y uh, sorry e raised to minus t t raised to n minus 1 dt and that is nothing but gamma n the second is if you look at the second transformation it does not contain any term of y to the power some number minus 1 instead of this we have integration 0 to infinity e to the power minus y raised to 1 upon n dy and that is given by n gamma n now this problem can be solved again by replacing y to the power 1 by n as t and we reduce it then we get the proof that this integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus y raised to 1 by n dy equal to n gamma n now the third transformation now in this transformation if you look at the limits these are different from 0 to infinity they are 0 to 1 log 1 upon y raised to n minus 1 dy and easily if you substitute log 1 by y as t then this can be reduced to the gamma function and hence we get the third transformation now what is the use of this transformation if uh, suppose there is a problem of gamma function but instead of e raised to minus x it is given something e raised to minus 3x you can directly written with the help of this property the answer as gamma n upon 3 to the power n like this or if you look at the third property that is very useful 
where the limits are not from 0 to infinity instead of they are from 0 to 1 and hence we get the solution. Now let's solve some examples of gamma functions. The first example is prove that integration 0 to infinity root x into e to the power cube root of x dx equal to 3 1 5 upon 16 into root pi. <coughs> now if you look at the given LHS, clearly the limits are from 0 to infinity, e to the minus power is given and x to the power half is given. So clearly this is the problem of gamma function. Hence, we will use gamma function to solve this. But if you look at the definition and the problem, the problem is e raised to minus x is not given, it is e raised to minus cube root of x. Hence, this problem can be reduced to gamma using the substitution cube root x equal to t. So, we will first put cube root of x equal to t, therefore x equal to t cube, hence dx is equal to 3t square dt. Now, look at the limits. If x is from 0 to infinity, if we put x equal to 0, we get t equal to 0, x equal to infinity, we get t equal to infinity. Hence, the limits are not changing. Hence, the given problem is reduced to integration 0 to infinity. Now, if you look at root x, root x is nothing but x to the power half and x is t cube, hence t to the power 3 by 2 into e to the power minus t 3t square dt. So, 3 is independent of the integration, we take it out. So, 3 into integration 0 to infinity e to the power minus t. 3 by 2 in plus 2 is 7 by 2. Therefore, t raised to 7 by 2. Now, this 7 by 2 can be written as 9 by 2 minus 1. So, integration is equal to 3 into 0 to infinity e raised to minus t, t to the power minus, uh, sorry, 9 by 2 minus 1 dt. And that is nothing but if you compare the definition of gamma function, this is gamma 9 by 2. So, 3 into ga gamma 9 by 2. And as in the remark, we have studied gamma n plus 1 equal to n gamma n. This gamma 9 by 2 can be written as 7 by 2, 5 by 2, 3 by 2 into 1 by 2 into gamma half. And gamma half is nothing but root pi. If you simplify all these terms, we will easily get that answer as 3, 1, 5 upon 16 into root pi. So quickly, if you revise the solution, as the limits are from 0 to infinity, e to the mi minus power is given, x to the power is given, hence clearly it is a problem of gamma function, but due to cube root of x, we cannot use gamma function directly, hence we replace cube root of x equal to t and we reduce it to the form of gamma function. I hope you will you have understood this example. Let us look at for the next example also. Now, in this example, prove that integration 0 to infinity x to the power 7 e to the power minus 2x square dx equal to 3 upon 16. Again, if you look at the question, the limits are from 0 to infinity. e to the minus power is given, x to the power is given and we can, so it is clear that this is the problem of gamma function. But we cannot use directly, so we have to substitute minus 2x square as t, therefore 4x dx is equal to dt, therefore dx is equal to dt upon 4x, therefore dx equal to dt upon 4 root of t by 2 and that is nothing but dx upon dx equal to dt upon 2 root 2 into root t, that is t raised to minus half upon 2 root 2 dt. Look at the table of limit x is from 0 to infinity, if you replace x equal to 0, t is 0, x equal to infinity, t is infinity. So, if you replace this value, we get integration 0 to infinity, t raised to 7 by 2 upon 2 raised to 7 by 2, e to the power minus t, t to the power minus half upon 2 root 2 dt. Simplifying this, we get 1 upon 2 raised to 5, integration 0 to infinity, e raised to minus t, t cube. This t cube can be written as t raised to 4 minus 1. And 2 raised to 5 is 32, so 1 upon 32, integration 0 to infinity, e to the power minus t, t to the power 4 minus 1 dt, and this is nothing but 1 by 32 gamma 4. And we have seen one remark, if n is integer, gamma 4 is 3 factorial, so 1 upon 32 into 3 factorial, that is 3 upon 16.